for a project? Oh, oh no. no. For you're taking a selfie? Yeah, like self photos. Is it for dating site? No. no. In an age where tripods exist and vibrators, we don't need no man. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to take pictures by yourself, for yourself, without an Instagram husband, without an Instagram boyfriend. But if you do want an Instagram boyfriend, this will probably help you get you one. Because what better way to find an Instagram boyfriend than to get all dressed up and look fly as fuck? What better opportunity will that give men to approach a girl who's taking photos by herself? That's just like an instant conversation starter. So we're just admiring her because she's doing such an amazing job. I thought she was so stylish. Anyways, no matter what relationship status you're in, whether you're single, you're taking, you're partially single, we have all been there. I'm gonna show you how to take photos by yourself for yourself. All right, so I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process that I do when I take photos by myself. Everything from prepping my bag to preparing my outfits to prepping the locations. And I shoot in Vancouver right now and it's winter. It's actually two days before Christmas. So it's pretty cold. So I'm gonna try to do some outfit changes and I'm gonna show you um, what I do when I'm packing several outfits to change in and where I change in public or how I change in public so that you're not flashing everyone. So my hair and my makeup is done and I'm just gonna get changed into my first outfit. <laughs> I always feel so extra in this coat. This is the kind of outfit you wear if you want to confront your boyfriend about something. Like this is all cute and innocent like oh cute skirt but like this gives like boss bitch energy. He already knows he fucked up once his jacket is on. It's like So where were you last night? So when I'm packing my bag for the day, I'm going to think about what's the easiest way I can change into an outfit. So I'm going to pack easy outfits to change into. And I've decided that I want to keep the boots the same in my outfit, my second outfit. So what I decided is a oversized dress shirt, which looks like a dress and then I'm gonna put the sweater over top of it. So later on you'll see the second outfit and how I change into the outfit really easily in public. And of course I'll also pack my tripod which holds my phone to take my photos. And this is a really great tripod because you can make it longer and you can make it shorter. I don't think you do that with men. And it also does come with a Bluetooth clicker. I'll put this link to this tripod in the description box below. But I love this because it's so compact and it can fit into my small bag and it can also be really long when I'm taking it out. All right, so I changed my mind. I'm gonna do this outfit first because I calculated it in my head with my mathlete skills because I'm Asian. This is actually gonna be easier for me to change into the second outfit later on because the first location I'm gonna take you is a more secluded area. I'm more comfortable with putting my huge jacket on the ground in a secluded area. And I also found it easier because I can also leave on the skirt for the second outfit that I'm gonna do underneath this first outfit because you can't see it. So when I change into my second outfit, I'm just gonna take this top part off and put the sweater on and put the jacket on. And I also changed my hair into like a low bun with some bangs in the front. So right now I just packed my sweater and I'm putting the tripod and of course it's in the Cactus Club cafe bag because I'm a basic Vancouver hoe. And I'm also gonna pack some snacks because a bitch gotta eat and maybe I want some tea on the road so I'm just gonna pack that too. Before I go out and take my photos in public, I always make sure I practice my posing in front of a mirror because every outfit is different and you always wanna find your best angles. This will also help you prevent feeling awkward in public when you don't know how to pose and this will also help you save some time. I'm kind of stalling, not gonna lie, because I'm getting really anxious to do this. And I normally get anxious to take tr my photos in public with a tripod, with one tripod. But today I'm gonna have two tripods because I'm bringing my camera, bringing you guys with me. And I'm also gonna have my phone tripod, so of course it's going to get a lot of attention. I still get nervous to this day to take photos by myself, but I'm going to do it because you gotta do it for the gram. And of course, I'm going to walk to all these locations. So um, usually I would have a car because it's a lot easier for me to do outfit changes. And sometimes I use my car as a, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> sometimes I use my car as a little change room when I'm going to different locations. But because I'm a cheap ass Asian and I don't want to pay for parking and parking downtown, Vancouver is so expensive. I'm going to walk, plus I live downtown. So like I should probably get some exercise anyways. So this was the first location and this was actually in front of a construction site. So I'm just sitting at my tripod here and you can totally see on my face that I look so nervous and uncomfortable. And I have a huge resting bitch face because there was a bunch of construction men working right in front of me. 
First, I use my front camera to make sure my camera is in the right spot and the right angle. And this will also help me practice my posing again once more. When I feel like I am actually ready, I'm going to turn my camera around and use the back camera because it is actually higher quality than the front camera. So now I am recording a video. That's right, I'm recording a video and not using my Bluetooth clicker even though it comes with a tripod. The reason I record a video instead of clicking each individual photo with the Bluetooth clicker is because this makes me feel more relaxed whenever I am taking photos and this is just my personal preference. Of course, if you feel like you want to take photos um, using the Bluetooth clicker, feel free to do that. Then at the end of this YouTube video, I'm going to show you how I capture each individual photo after recording a video. And if you're wondering if the quality is compromised when I do this technique, um, just watch the end of this YouTube video and you'll be able to judge for yourself. So now I'm just reviewing the footage to see if I'm happy with any of the shots. So now we can move on to our next location. When I have to do outfit changes in public, I always find big corporations and use their bathrooms. Places like Starbucks would be a really great place because a lot of non-customers use their bathroom anyways. And in this video, I'm using Nordstrom's bathroom. That is a truck of a potential pedophile. I'm usually not mean to people, but this man gave me one of these when I looked at him. So that's why I'm jokingly calling him a pedophile. So, as you can tell with that encounter, I was really uncomfortable taking out my other camera tripod with my phone tripod to record the behind the scenes. So, you're just gonna get this version that I recorded on my phone. I was on a super busy street in downtown Vancouver where a lot of cars were passing by and a lot of people were walking on the sidewalk. And you know, that happens all the time, but you just gotta keep going and try to zone people out. And so I just did the same technique here. I just recorded a video and then I met these two guys. So we're just talking about how I take my photos by myself. So we're just admiring her because she's doing <laughs> such an amazing job and we thought she was so stylish, so put together. We're we had all to matching. come up. Yeah, we had to come up and give her kudos for what she was doing and then we find out that she's got 750,000 followers. What? I just got back and I am drenched in sweat, which is why my hair is up. The sun is about to go down. So I made it just in time because the sun goes down at around 4 p.m. in Vancouver now. And just when you think I'm done being full myself, it doesn't stop there. The day's not over yet because we have to go over the footage and pick out our best shots in order to pick our best photos for Instagram. So today is all about being narcissistic because now we are going to review the footage and just pick out our best shots. So gonna find I think that one was all right so what I do is I screenshot the image and then because I have a iPhone 11 I think this is an iPhone 11 um, I have to crop it a little bit so I'm gonna crop it and save it to my photos and I'm just going to repeat that process with every video that I took by the way before I got an iPhone 11 I was shooting on my iPhone 7 plus for the longest time. So for those of you who are saying, oh, I don't have an iPhone 11, so I'm not gonna get good photos. That's not true because I was using this up until last year. And I'll insert some screenshots of photos that I took on my iPhone 7 Plus. So you don't really need the iPhone 11, but um, it does give it a little bit of a better quality, of course, because the camera is different. So hopefully that encourages you to overcome your fear of taking photos by yourself or taking photos in public. And I just really want to encourage you to try doing this yourself so you don't have to depend on anyone else or rely on a friend or an Instagram husband or boyfriend to come along. I really love showing people, especially women, how to become independent. So if you try this method, um, let me know in the comments below and feel free to tag me in your Instagram stories and I would love to see it and share on my Instagram stories too.